Got it. Okay, we are back. Part three, characteristics of the biblical New Testament body. It's Brother Jim, Brother Jonathan, Brother Drake. Go to don'tperish.com, and we always remind you where you have lots of articles, audios, and videos to help you in the faith. We're talking about characteristics of the New Testament body versus denominational Sunday religion, and we've gotten through point 11, so we're moving on to point 12. This is a big one. Well, they're all big. But this is a really important one. Separated from the worldly ways or from the ways of the world. Brother John, would you read those scripture verses under number 12? 1 John 2.15 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are mm-hmm. of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, mm-hmm. and ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. First, Thess- First Thessalonians 5, 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. Amen. So... This one, we're going to do, again, we're going to do roundtables on all these, but this one could be a huge topic, but we see this all over. We go out witnessing. We go to religious places to call people to faith and repentance. You see Halloween signs outside of a church. That's (laughs) appearance of evil right there. They put on Halloween parties. They bring in football parties, NFL Super Bowl parties. Yeah, idolatry. They invite the world in with their carnality, their music. I've heard stories of... Modern pastors flying in on Batman, in Batman costumes on cables. The point is, they're totally linked to the world because they believe that in order to reach the world, they must become like the world. And that's exact opposite of what Jesus Christ teaches us. Call that seeker sensitive? Yes, yeah. seeker sensitive, absolutely. In order to reach worldly people, we got to be worldly so they can appreciate us. But the Bible doesn't teach us that, does it? Yeah. No. No. And, and, I mean, Apostle Paul does talk about about becoming all things to all men, like we've talked about. But but that does not mean to to do the things that men yeah. do of the world. Yeah. To be of the world, it means to uh, to to remain unspotted. Yes. You know, to remain holy. Yes. And when a person sees that and and desires repentance and desires the Lord, you know, then you're there. But how can how can you become like the world and, and take place or take part in the things of the world? Mm. And then and then say you're say you're of the Lord, you know, and then that goes, you know, that's back to James four four, you know, you Amen. can't you can't be of the world and be of God. And so, so, second second so Corinthians six, out yep, second Corinthians six talks about light and darkness don't mix, don't be part of them, and God will receive you. And I'm glad you brought up that point. Yep, they run and say, well, Paul said become all things to all people, so we're worldly to reach the worldly people. No, no, no. Context when you study the Bible, people, in context, Paul was speaking to the Jews. He became a Jew to the Gentile. Mm-hmm. He became a Gentile. Nowhere did Paul sin. Nowhere did Paul do pagan ways. Nowhere did Paul become part of the Roman corrupt culture. He was reaching many people do, via different avenues of um, preaching, and but he did not include himself with the fallen world. So we see that the world today is attracted to man-made religion, Sunday religion, mm-hmm. because they're using parties, programs, carnal, worldly things, worldly music, and we're not supposed to draw people with those things. We're supposed to draw people with the gospel of faith and repentance and new life and yeah. not tease people with the things of the world. It's so bad that man-made religion is bringing in comedians to not, entertain. Not to mingle with the world. Yeah. yeah. So this separation from the world and um, is the big difference between the true body of Christ and the false systems of man on Sunday. So we need to call that out. If your body is linking itself with the ways of the world, it's not the true New Testament body of Christ at all. Um, Moving on to number 13, using discerning judgment of false teachers. I think it's Brother Drake's turn. Number 13, if you could read those scripture verses for us. Yeah, 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. 
and then Matthew seven fifteen through 16. Mm -hmm. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. And then Romans sixteen seventeen. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Amen. First Thessalonians 5, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. Amen. So this is another important point because what we see in Sunday religion is no good judgment, no good discernment of false teachers because they're void of the true word of God. And many times their leaders are void of being born again. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you, you can't judge. You can't make distinction between truth and error. And that's simply not true. The word of God tells us to judge. Paul in 1 Corinthians 5 tells us to judge the body of Christ to keep it Amen. pure and to get rid of sin. And they even invite in false teachers to come in and teach their people because they have no biblical discernment. So yeah. using Amen. discernment of false teachers, I mean, I think we've seen that just in our witnessing that people don't even know what a false teacher is. No. They have no clue. No, they um, don't. Because they're not rightly dividing the word of God. They have no standard of truth. So they're being led astray by wolves like Rick Warren or these Word of Faith teachers or heretical movements like the Hebrew Roots movement simply because they're not using discerning judgment that Jesus taught us to have. In Matthew 7, Jesus did not say don't judge at all. He said make sure you don't have sin in your life. Yep. Then judge rightly. We see Jesus, we see Paul, we see Peter making righteous judgments about false teachers all over the New Testament Bible as oh, well yeah. as the Old Testament, the prophets. Oh, yeah. Jude, <laughs> Jude, some very, very, very harsh, yes. harsh rebukes going to going to false teachers. Amen. Very, very harsh. Some of the harshest things you might read yep. um, going going on false teachers. So, yeah. yeah, so in no way are we to condone that. And in any way, we should follow after their examples and, and yeah. be just as stern. In people, that yeah, people think making a judgment is unloving when, in fact, if you can make a judgment and guide someone out of their sin, the Bible calls that the most loving thing you could do. Amen. Snatching to, them from the fire. It's to love God and love your neighbor. If you yep. if your neighbor's Snatch in them. false doctrine and going to Snatch. hell and you don't pull them from yep. that, you don't love them. No. You don't love them at all. Yeah, that's you. That's you watching them in the fire, and then we're called to we're called to, to to take them from that fire. And don't you think that's part of why Jesus said we'll be hated? Because we use judgment and we call out false teachers. And He told us in the last days many false teachers will abound. So Amen. if we're calling out Amen. false teachers and many abound, and people love false teachers, it makes good sense. Yeah, His yeah. true people will be hated. Amen. Amen. And the world doesn't, um, you know, the world doesn't want to believe that they're that they're on the road to hell. Amen. You know, the world doesn't want to believe that they're that they're going against God, and they don't want to wake up to that. Okay. And so, this false Sunday religion you know, gives them that false sense of purity, like you're yeah. okay, yeah, you're, you're fine, okay. when they're not fine according to God's word. Amen. And and that's what we do, and that's why we are hated because we because we wake the world up. We say, Amen. wake up, wake up, call them to repent. Don't, yeah, wake up and don't be asleep. You need to wake up. I said it a bunch of times, but yeah. Amen. So <laughs> separated from the world, that's a huge topic. And also then 13, using discerning judgment of false teachers. We yeah. must do that. Otherwise, we will be deceived. Jesus commanded Amen. us in Matthew 24, do not be deceived. Uh, number 14, the Lord's Supper. And Brother Jonathan, if you would read the verse under number 14 for us. So uh, Matthew 26, 26 through 28, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. And break it, and gave it to his gave it to the disciples, and said, "Take, eat. This is my body." And he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, "Drink ye all of it, for this is the blood, of, this is my blood of the new testament, which is shed for many, for many, for the remission of sins." Amen. Amen. So <laughs> the the point here is in Matthew twenty six, Jesus institutes the new covenant to us. It's the Lord's Supper. It was done with his brethren over a meal they were sharing. And we'll be doing a roundtable on this. Um, what man-made religion has turned it into is a little tidbit ritual that's controlled by a man. And it is not what Christ instituted and ordained for his New Testament body. It really stems from the, the Protestants are doing what stems from the Roman Catholics today. is very controlled, man-made um, perverted Lord's Supper, and we'll be doing more on that and um, future roundtables.
but it's not the New Testament Lord's Supper that yeah. God ordained. It's made of man. It's made of man. Yeah, it's a it's a fleshly thing. It's become a vain ritual. It's become a vain yeah. ritual. Amen. Um, number fifteen, exercise discipline in the body. Brother Drake, would you read those verses under number fifteen for us? Yes. Matthew 18, 15 through 17, we got. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear you, then take with you one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But he, if he neglects to hear the church... Let him be unto thee as a as a heathen man and a publican. And then we got First Corinthians five eleven. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, a covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such, and one new uh, know not. To eat. I think I got a typo in there. Do oh. not eat. Sorry about oh, that. Oh yeah, typo yeah. Do not eat. eat. Yeah. So so saying, yep. don't even eat. Don't, don't even, even eat, eat with them. them. Yeah. I'll fix that. Yeah. Yeah. Avoid them at every cost, and that's Amen. something that you don't see, but in in today's church, just word of discernment. Second Thessalonians three fourteen. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Amen. Amen. So Amen. exercising discipline. I mean, the very first one. I cannot, <clears throat> excuse me, I cannot tell you how many times we are told that you can't call out sin in the body of Christ. You're mean-spirited. You can't do yeah, it. I Yet Jesus that. Christ gives us a commandment, yeah. tells us to go to a brother, then do the process, take more, then take him for the whole body. And then Jesus says in his own loving way, if he won't hear the whole church, put him out as a heathen yeah. and a publican. Well, that's godly love because if you Seriously. separate him from the body that he loves, he should repent. He should repent. He should turn from his sin. But if you leave him in the body, Sister Debbie and I many years ago witnessed in a Methodist body, and I'll tell the story quickly. Yeah. The man told us that he allowed a couple that were in an adulterous relationship continue to gather in his pews. She was married, he was married, they were hooking up and coming and sitting in his building. And when I asked him, what will you do about that? He said... Well, we think it's wrong, but we're going to allow them to continue to come here because we love them. It's condoning them, giving them a place for it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So yeah. condoning them, giving them a place for it instead of calling them to repentance. Amen. And, and we see that. It doesn't Amen. have to be adultery. We see it all over man-made religion. They admit that they're immodest. They admit that they're worldly. They admit that they're pagan, and we'll cover that. But yet they don't call anyone to repentance mm. using church discipline. Because, again, their goal... The man-made Sunday system, their goal is to have more people in the building to build a bigger building, Amen. not to keep the Word of God. Amen. It's very true, and and it's it's just a good thing to note that that's it is the ultimate the ultimate love you can show someone because if you're gonna if you're gonna still allow them to be around you at that point if they're in that sin, then then you're not doing them justice. It's and that's why the Apostle Paul it's said, not godly love. yeah, avoid them and, and, and you got to let them know that if they're going to remain in their sin, that they're not even to be around you. Yeah. They're not even to be around you. So the, the punishment is separation from the body of Christ yep. until you repent and come back. Because the Bible says a little bit of leaven, Galatians 5, 9, affects the whole body, a little bit Amen. of sin. So we want to make sure that we're keeping ourselves pure. Amen. And Sunday church isn't interested in that. They're interested in their programs, in their growth movement, in their seeker-sensitive ways, like Brother John mentioned. And so that's a big problem, not using biblical discipline in the body. It's almost, I always say, you have to walk in with a gun and shoot at people before they would use discipline on you. Amen. Um, number 16, Amen. singing from the heart, not using instrumental music. Brother John, if you would read that verse for us. Ephesians 5.19, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we've got articles on this at our teaching blog. Instrumental music is a huge emotional tool that man-made religion is using, and we do not see it modeled in the New Testament. Yes, the Old Testament used it. We're not in the Old Testament. We don't imitate the Old Testament. We imitate Paul and Christ, and they did not use instrumental music. It says right there, to make a melody in your heart to the Lord, yeah. we now use our voices 
Yeah, I, I sing praise in my heart to the Amen. Holy Spirit in me, you know. It's, Amen. You make you know, a joyful noise. We yeah. don't need to be practicing guitars and pianos for that. That's Again, of the world. That is of the world. Yeah. And I want to throw in Romans 8 says you can't please God in your flesh. Yep. And we all know from our past what does music, country, metal, classical, whatever, what does it move? Your flesh. Yep. flesh. Your flesh so the music, really instrumental music has to go for more godly music, which is singing a cappella, singing in your heart. You can make music to God on your own or together as a body, but not this emotional music that's very fleshly. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, that has become the center of man-made religion. They sing for 40 minutes and they preach for less time than that. It's the exact opposite in the New yeah. Testament body. They sang a little bit and they preached a lot. Yeah, so they preached a lot. We'll be doing some more roundtables on that and we went over 15 minutes. We're going to be coming back with part four on characteristics of the New Testament body of Christ. Stay Amen. tuned. Amen. Praise God. Amen.